Hello, this is part two to what does the Chinese Yuan let us know. And um, I encourage all of you to always leave comments, ask questions uh, below this video if you're watching this on YouTube because while most of the time I really don't have time to answer uh, questions on my YouTube videos, I do read through everything. And then sometimes, occasionally actually I do answer questions, but most of the time it's my staff, it's my I had so many discussions with my staff that basically their answers would be the same as mine. Uh, anyway, but if there are enough questions, I will make a part two, as in this case, so you can hear what my thoughts are about your questions if my staff or I, we don't have the opportunity to answer your questions directly um, on the YouTube videos. So let's begin. So number one, uh, a couple of people commented that perhaps the uh, highest denominated UN bill is only the equivalent of 16 US dollars because that's a good way for the Chinese to tax everything, to track everything because all high-end items would need to be uh, bought in plastic. And this simply is not true and anyone that spent a lot of time in China knows there's an easy way to circumvent that which is to pay uh, with high ticket items in gold because gold, unlike the West, uh, or unlike in particular the United States, is easily accessible. You can almost walk into any major Chinese bank and they're selling gold bars so you can buy gold. Um, there are dealers in China where you know all school wealthy Chinese will walk in and walk out with a million dollars worth of physical gold in like a Nike bag and, and just walk out. So there, there are easy ways you could buy high ticket items just in gold which um, you know, is, un is untraceable. So, because, you know, gold's easily melted down, the serial numbers can be melted off bars and can be refabricated and, and then used to purchase high ticket items. So, there's an easy way to get around being tracked or not leave that paper trail. So, you know, in that case, you can even buy smaller denominated gold bars, uh, which there are a lot of uh, those kind of smaller gold bars being sold in China as well. So, that's one way around the system. So, I really don't think that is... The reason another person mentioned that um, most of China is poor, so they, you know, for most of China, you don't need anything greater than uh, a hundred yuan bill. And while that's true, I mean, look at all these other poor countries as well. In Thailand, the bulk, the majority of people are poor. The majority do not make more than, say, like 150 baht a day. So, but still, there is a, a thousand baht uh, denomination note. So that would be a huge, huge amount. Think about that. That's like eight days of pay for uh, the average Thai worker. So that's a lot, a lot of money. But yet, you know, for the extremely wealthy, usually the banks will accommodate it. So I think, you know, there's something else going on as far, as far as why the 100 yuan bill is the highest denominated note. Someone else asked if, the, if Asians view gold in the same way as uh, most Westerners or most Americans, which is they don't own any gold at all and don't view gold as money. The answer is definitively no. Just check out uh, the significance of gold in Asian languages. So you can see that in Chinese and in Japanese, the characters for money and gold are exactly the same. So Chinese and Japanese equate gold and money as equivalent, unlike Ben Bernanke, the former U.S. Fed chairman, who says gold is not money. And, um, and then secondly, you saw that in Thailand, the word for silver and money is the same. So again, equating precious metals to money. And finally, I showed you that in Korea, even my last name, Kim, is the same as gold. So that's why so many Koreans have the last name Kim. Now, a lot of people in their own countries, they tend to look at things in a vacuum. So if it's not happening to them, they don't worry about it. So it doesn't matter that in Cyprus, the two largest banks stole more than half of people's accounts that had over 100,000 euros. It doesn't matter because it didn't happen in my country, which is a stupid foolish way of looking at things because you have to connect, start connecting the dots because the whole global economy, the global monetary system is connected. So if you look at various emerging markets currencies right now that are 
really crashing in Thailand, the Thai bot has fallen against the US dollar about 14% in just the past several months. You look at the Turkish lira, which is absolutely collapses down about 30% since uh, the beginning of 2013. If you look at the Russian ruble down 18%, but if you look at the Argentinian peso, that's down 60% since just 2013. So, you know, if you're, and that's down versus US dollar. So, you know, a lot of people might say, hey, isn't, don't we want to own US dollars then if the emerging currency, emerging market currencies are collapsing? And the definitive answer again is no, because what is happening as former assistant Treasury Secretary Paul Craig Roberts said is that the feds are just uh, exerting their criminal behavior upon the entire world. So they're deliberately crashing emerging markets now to try to force people back into the US dollar. But that is not happening because you, you see Russia with, uh, or China with Russia, China with Australia, China with Brazil, China with Japan is cutting out the US dollar international trade. So international trade and the petrodollar, the use of paying, using the dollar for paying for oil is are there the two of the foundations that keep the US dollar from going to its intrinsic value zero. And aggressively that's being cut out in all international trade now. So, you know, even though the dollar has been uh, rising against these emerging market currencies, it's the same thing is just like the worst of all these evils. You don't, I mean, the best of all these evils. You don't want the best of all these evils because eventually that even the best of all evils is going to go down too. And even, you know, recently this is uh, even comedic in its content that Zimbabwe cut out the US dollar. Zimbabwe, one of the biggest offenders of quantitative easing, who had a peak inflation rate of. Something ridiculous. Hold on a second. Let me go look it up. Okay, so I just checked it out. The height of the Zimbabwe excess in their quantitative easing policies, they drove monthly inflation to 79.6 billion percent a month and eventually had to print 100 billion Zimbabwe dollar notes. So obviously increasing the, um, the nominal amount of notes of your domestic currency that happens that is not a good sign that means your savings are being destroyed by the bankers in your country it is not a good sign so i think it's a good sign for the future of uh, the chinese economy that it they only have 100 yuan uh, as their highest denominated note uh, one thing, last thing i wanted to mention about zimbabwe now remember when zimbabwe was engaging in their destructive qe policies they pointed to the U.S. Fed Reserve as their shining example. They said, look, U.S. Fed Reserve is doing exactly what we're doing. So there's no problem and this will all turn out well. And as of course you know, it led to the collapse of the U.S., I mean the Zimbabwe dollar. So now, up after the collapse of the Zimbabwe dollar, they've actually been using the U.S. dollar in their currency. And now recently, they just announced that they're going to stop using the U.S. dollar and they're going to start using the Chinese yuan as their major currency in their country. So if that is not an indictment of the U.S. dollar, that even Zimbabwe that had 79.6 billion percent monthly inflation has dropped the U.S. dollar. If anyone knows of the risks of hyperinflation, it's the Zimbabwe government and they switched to the Chinese yuan. Uh, the other thing that uh, I wanted to address is that uh, I think someone commented in my first video that it would be disastrous for the Chinese if they back the UN with gold. And that simply is not true at all because the difference between, say, America um, and China, although both uh, central banks have engaged in huge amounts of quantitative easing and have created massive bubbles in capital markets in their countries, is that when this bubble bursts, the people that own gold and silver, physical gold and physical silver, will be fine. And that's almost anyone that can afford to squirrel money away in physical gold and silver in China has done it because the Chinese government have been running commercials like, you know, Tide laundry detergent in China since 2011 urging everyone in the country to buy physical gold and physical silver. So you could probably walk out and onto the streets of Shanghai and Beijing and ask a hundred people if they own any physical gold or physical silver and probably the percentages would be over 90 percent whereas you can walk into the, some of the wealthiest communities in the United States say like Malibu ask a hundred people I'd be surprised if be, you got one percent 
that answer yes they own physical gold and physical silver so that is the difference so as always comment below let me know what you think don't forget to click subscribe as well if you want to be uh, kept up to date of our upcoming videos and um, the next video I'm actually going to make is is called how we can affect positive change in this world and uh, the courage of the lone dissenter so I'm going to be addressing that topic and as always remain intensely curious thanks for watching until next time so long